Raila's maandamano is designed to put President William Ruto in a very bad spot. If only people knew the real reason behind this maandamano that Raila Odinga is planning, everybody would marvel because the reasons are very sinister. And in this video, I want us to look at the real reason why Raila Odinga is planning this maandamano protests. It is not the high cost of living. It is not because of the cost of unga. He has other ulterior motives that I want us to get into. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the first major reason behind this mandamano is that Raylo Dinga is banking on the fact that there's going to be some bloodshed. Now, usually, such things can be prevented or scaled down by the law enforcement officers. They have been trained to know how to handle a crowd that is rioting in such a way that you are not engaging them in combat and they are not engaging you. The distance between the two of you is covered by tear gas canisters and uh, the propelled water that we see on that track. But it's never hand-to-hand -hand combat, rarely. So no matter the number of people who show up for the protests, it is something that can be contained. However, Raylo Dinga is trying to turn this into a bloodbath by rerouting the protesters from the usual Moy Avenue, Kenyatta Avenue, Tomboya and sending them to State House. On 20th, they're going to be attacking the various state lodges and also they're going to have state house as a focal point. What do you think happens when you start marching down towards state house? You'll automatically find a myriad of barricades and if at all you make it through the first and second one, most of the law enforcement officers around the president have taken an oath, an oath to protect him with their lives. And in the event that push comes to shove, and I really hope not, I really hope that that is not the outcome, but most people who are hoping that in fact, that is going to be the outcome. Now one might wonder, of what benefit is the deaths of some of these people to Raila Odinga, for example? I've seen many people commenting and saying that it is a ritual, it is a sacrifice uh, to, to some uh, spirits here and there. I have no conclusive evidence of that, so I cannot corroborate that story or say that it is false. But what I know for a fact is that Raila Odinga is not a fool. Everything he is doing there is an end game. Now, Raila Odinga is very bitter with William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa. He is not happy with their presidency. And he is hoping that any form of bloodshed or a bloodbath, he can convert that and use it as artillery to hit William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa. How so? I'll give you a story before we get into that analogy. Say, for example, you live in a house which has 10 different individuals and one day something gets stolen maybe a pair of shoes and you unfortunately you are the one who was around and you get accused that you are the one who stole that pair of shoes and much as it's a rumor that it could be you people believe it on the get-go and they believe that you're the one who stole that pair of shoes when in fact you you know for sure it wasn't you it is one of the other nine members of that house so time goes by the thief strikes again but this time with more bravado because they know if I steal another pair of shoes, no one is looking at me, they will be looking at you. So your reputation will go further down, down, down the drain. And this person who is the cause of all this will be getting away with it every other day. And it is the same thing that Ray Lodinga is trying to do. He has looked at William Ruto's profile and he knows all the falsehoods that are in there. For instance, when we look at the murder of uh, Kenei, a security personnel who used to work in the DP's office, they will say that guy was murdered by the deputy president, the then deputy president. They will then come out and say, look at 207, he was burning people in a church. There is no evidence till now, any conclusive evidence that William Ruto had anything to do with any of those cases. But they are going to use those cases amongst others to build up a narrative and a story that William Ruto is a killer and he is now coming to strike for a third time by taking out 40, 50 protesters in cold blood. Now what does Rayla stand to gain from that? Quite a lot. From then on, he's going to push to have William Ruto sent to Hague along with Rigadi Gashago. He has done it before shamelessly. He sent a sitting head of state, Uhuru Kenyatta, and his deputy William Ruto to Hague. Do you know there is a high chance those guys could never have come back? Hague does not respect African countries. They can do almost anything to our leaders. They can even throw them behind bars. Yet first world countries like America do not even recognize Hague. In fact, it's in their constitution that if any such rogue uh, body tries to detain an American, they have the right to go there and remove that person, and they have the military power to do so. So Ray Lodinga's game plan is to get William Ruto once again in front of that court. And this time he'll be showing up 
and the court will have already known him as a person. They are saying, is this not the same person who was deputy president and he was dragged to this court because of a uh, certain killings in Kenya in 2007 or oh, it's the same person now what again has happened this and that has happened and believe you me the same nonsense we saw in the Supreme Court when they were taking falsified documents and dossiers with the John Gidongos who have never been punished till today they are just freely enjoying space in Kenya taking a fake document talking of 56 hackers in Karen another one saying that there is a whistleblower another one saying it was just total nonsense all that we are going to see it play out again in the Hague now the difference between the Hague and us, we are in this country, we know what is happening in this country, we know who is lying, who is saying the truth. But in Hague, it's 50-50. If you are going there, you could very well be convicted or acquitted. Anything can happen. And even worse, your name can be dragged through the mud. An entire president going to explain yourself before some people who have no power to elect you or to impeach you. William Ruto needs to be very, very careful with this guy. The move is to get him to Hague once again. And if that is not the case, he just wants to drag his name through the mud, brand him a killer, propagate these lies all over the world, and suddenly the William Ruto presidency and the administration will start hurting. No foreign government will want to do business with him. No foreign government will want to give donations or even loans. But President William Ruto is not a fool. And I believe he has been surrounded by a very competent kitchen cabinet because how he is handling this issue is even putting Raila Odinga himself, who thinks he's putting a trap, deeper and deeper into murky waters. Waters which are full of squalor and everything else that you can imagine. And how exactly is the president doing this? He's doing this by, I saw him on stage just the other day, and uh, he said this, Raila Odinga must stop the blackmail. Uh, he wants to do the protests. The president said there's no problem, but it is Raila Odinga's responsibility to work hand in hand with the police officers and all responsibility of anything that happens on that day falls on his shoulders. The president never came out to say what some of us would have said that this mandamano must stop, we will put an end to it, we will do this and that. If you come out with such harsh tones and something which matches your tone happens, they will say you are the catalyst, you are the reason it happened. But the president all along is saying you want to protest, it's fine. Kindiki will give you security, you just let us know how many days a week you want to protest. We'll give you security, there's no problem. Just follow the law, respect other Kenyans, don't destroy their property, and don't uh, start harassing the security personnel, throwing rocks and all these other things. So now the ball is in their court. The media will be there to capture all the crazy hulabaloo that's taking place. And there's now no way for the Azimio Brigade and the leadership to turn back the turret and say that whatever blowback takes place is as a result of William Ruto. Not the case. Just listening to these remarks by the president. And we must tell my good uh, friend Raila Odinga, you cannot, enough is enough. You cannot continue to blackmail the country. And we have no problem with you organized demonstration. But please, it is your responsibility to work with the police to make sure that the rest of the citizens of Kenya, their lives are not disrupted, their property is not destroyed, their business is not affected, they can go to work, you can carry out your demonstration. I'm sure both you and I would agree that was the best course of action and the best kind of rhetoric to give during such a crazy tumultuous time. But as usual guys, that's just my opinion, so please drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios.